to episode 22 of the Canon Yards podcast. My name is Lynn and I'm coming to you from Cardiff in Wales in the UK and this is a knitting, crochet, spinning, dyeing, fibre based, mostly fortnightly podcast but at the moment I'm coming to you weekly because obviously things are a bit weird in the world and um, I am working from home so I have a little bit more time to um, get things done. So yes, we are doing weekly podcasts at the moment. Um, if you are a new viewer, thank you so, so much for dropping by. I'm glad you found me. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much as always for coming back. I really, really do appreciate everybody spending some time with me and seeing what I'm up to. And hopefully um, I can keep you company as you work through a few rows or rounds on your projects. Um, I wasn't sure whether I was going to podcast today because I haven't actually made a great deal of progress on anything. So if you are indeed a new viewer, you may want to kind of jump on a different episode, last week's episode or the week before, because there's probably more content. But I thought I would check in anyway, um, because time seems to have disappeared this week. I don't know if, if it's the uh, the global time warp or just mine specifically, but we will chat more about that later. Um, yeah, so we follow the usual format of works in progress, finished objects, things I've been making, creating, etc., and then um, a little bit of chatter at the end. So yes, let's begin. How are you all? It is a very gloomy, wet day here in Cardiff today. We've had a few beautiful days of sunny, sunny weather and now it's quite chilly, quite rainy. Um, but hey, it doesn't really matter because most of us aren't going out anyway. I uh, went for a little quick run this morning before the rain actually hit. Uh, I say quick, I wasn't quick the time I was out was quick. I was certainly was not quick at all. Just trying to keep a little bit um, a little bit physical in the day because it's easy to lose any sense of mobility and physic physicality, isn't it, when you're at home all the time. Um, yes, so having said that, I have, uh, this week has been very weird because I seem to have been sucked into my spinning wheel time warp. I have really, really enjoyed my spinning wheel this week. Um, it's a new, very, very new skill for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I learnt last year at the fabulous Fibre Hut in Evesham, but I really didn't get much time to work on it. But now, last week, I really, really... Um, cracked it I think. It doesn't feel quite so alien so I'm really pleased to have had the time to spend on that. Um, yes, so that's kind of absorbed all my time and I just wanted to show you really in quite a relatively short amount of time if you are not a spinner and you've kind of always fancied giving it a go I would absolutely recommend. This week I really haven't had much brain space for anything. I don't know whether it's because we are three, four weeks in, we've been told we're on lockdown for another three weeks and that sense of um, not really knowing how we're going to get out of this, how, when, in what form, what are we going to go back to, what is the new normal, all those massive, massive questions um, have been occupying my brain maybe you've been the same. Um, and also that that element of um, guilt as well has been kicking in because I can work from home um, and I'm not on the front line, I'm not a key worker, I'm not an NHS worker. Um, my job is secure at the moment because I can do it online. Um, and yeah, so the elements of guilt start to kick in really that others aren't as fortunate as I am. And so I feel guilty for spending time on hobbies almost. Um, but yeah, I digress already. I haven't even shown you any fibre yet. But yeah, just to give you a background of where I am in my brain, I shall move on very quickly. So this was the first thing I spun and I was very pleased with myself. Can you see? And there is some very, very thick bits here that I was just hurling at the spinning wheel essentially. And then I got a little bit better with the gray. Uh, was a little bit thinner and so when I plied those two together um, yes I thought oh wow look at that obviously very slubby obviously very thick and thin but that was a massive massive achievement so that was my first little attempt and then I carried on with the grey and this is what I ended up with was something a little bit more um, you can see the grey is still quite thick but getting better 
and then the white was the the latest stuff I added in so I'm getting better and better and more and more even but still I thought this was you know a delicate dream but obviously not that's probably about I would say a hefty DK weight I think but then yes yeah, so I've spent quite a few hours this week having a little go at I had a um a top a um, braid is it called I don't know see I'm not au fait uh, of a merino wool and it was a, like a humbug color so it was greys and whites and this is what I've managed so this is the latest offering is it going to focus come on now yeah so this is a lot more delicate I think um, the grey and the white was in the, in the, the braid of fibre anyway, um, so I managed to, yeah, just create something a little bit more delicate. Um, I haven't um, set this, the twist in that or anything, I haven't wet it or blocked it or whatever you, whatever you call it to be able to set it flatter. But yeah, it is lovely and soft and I haven't weighed it yet, I haven't worked out kind of how many metres are in there. But I'm really pleased that I had some time to spend properly on my spinning wheel this week. And I just didn't even have the brain space to knit. I don't know what's been going on. But uh, I haven't been reading. I haven't been listening to Audible. I've watched very little telly. But just the rhythmic thing of the spinning wheel um, has really kept me going this week, if I'm absolutely honest. Um, so yeah, so pleased with that. Um, and then last week um, I was doing some little bits of dyeing experiments and I showed you the, the braids that I dyed up which kind of took these forms so I, I dyed some in little different methods um, and the reason I did that was to try and work out what different um, different allocations of colours would give me when I knitted it up. I don't know about you but I um, I see these beautiful skeins but I can't quite picture how they'll knit up so I thought well if I dye a few little bits and bobs then I can knit them up and see how they pan out so I can make better judgments when I am buying from hand dyers or whatever when I see stuff. So this as I showed you last week is a little skein I dyed up um, and this one was quite regimented in the way I dyed it. So I just want to show you, I think I started with grey at the top. Can you see they're real sections? So there was grey, then there was green, then there was like a lilac, and then there was red. So that's the way it kind of, um, that I set it in the pan. And then when I put it into skeined it up, that's the way it looks now as a, as a cake. Come on. So, the colours are quite distributed around, as you kind of see in the cake. And then when I've knitted it up, so these were minis, they were 20 gram mini merino singles I think I had a pack of. So um, so obviously the distance between them isn't as much as you would get in a, a whole 100 gram hank. Um, but this is the way it's knitted up, and so you can see there is a certain amount of pooling and striping, which for socks I quite like. But for a garment, that might be a little bit too much. And the reason I did um, essentially 64 stitches in the round is because it's a mini, so it's got a smaller distance. Uh, I just wanted to see what that would create. Therefore, when I do 100 gram, um, and the distance obviously is wider between the colour pooling in the, the garment. So if that was knitted up into a sweater obviously the distance between those color pools would be a lot wider but at the moment they're coming up almost as a stripe because the distance the, the stitch count is a lot smaller you know what I'm saying so that was quite interesting so that makes sense to me now so now I can kind of understand how if I don't want color pooling how to spread those colors out a little bit more um, and then the other one I did was um, this one and this was done more in a pot so I kind of added three colours and it was a little bit more um, sporadic so the top and the bottom of the skein had the pink and then I think I did blue in the middle so if I open it out to show you so yeah there's pink here 
can you see pink at both ends and then I, I think I put some blues and greens and teals in the middle so there's a lot more pink there on both ends and then when I um, I reskeined this one to see how it would look when it was reskeined because a lot of dyers do that sometimes they they dye everything up and then they reskein it so that is the same thing but just sorry it's not focusing very well but that is the same thing but just reskeined so you can see the distribution of the colors is a lot more um, varied I guess along the skein and obviously it cakes up that as you'd expect like this and then this is what that produced so there's still an element of the color pooling but not as much you can see the distribution of the colors is a lot uh, a lot more random maybe and again if this was on um, a wider project on a sweater or something you really wouldn't get that that pooling at all so for me I found that really helpful to not only for my own dyeing but also to have a look at um, other other people's dyeing and kind of when you're buying something to see if you want it for a garment or you want it from socks what kind of fabric you're going to get and I don't actually think that there's anything wrong with obviously when you see a skein and it's all um, twisted up you can't really get a sense of where the colour allocation is. So I don't think there's anything wrong with opening out a skein, you know, if you're seeing it at a, at a wool show or in a yarn store, to be able to open out to kind of see how that's going to pan out. It's a little bit more difficult, obviously, when you're buying online. Um, so I wonder whether it's easier to see an opened out skein as well. I don't know whether you agree with that, whether you kind of, maybe you've worked it out for yourselves and you can kind of envisage what each um, skein is gonna produce. But I think to be able to see it opened out gives you a better idea than just seeing it in the skein like that. Um, so yeah, that made a lot of sense to me. That kind of helped with uh, what I was um, trying to achieve to be able to, because I dyed quite a lot for my own projects. Um, so I want to know that if I'm doing a, a smaller garment, as I say, or a pair of socks, what I'm trying to achieve. So it's a little bit less, uh, more judgment than luck, because at the moment it is far more luck than judgment. So that's sort of what I've been occupying my time with this week, knitting up those swatches and, and exploring those different colour palettes and colour um, dyeing areas. Um, knitting wise, as in project wise, I haven't done a great deal, haven't kind of moved on on my uh, mystery cowl very much. It's um, it's the shoulder to shoulder mystery cowl, but it does the um, mosaic type knitting. So you're slipping stitches to create a pattern. Um, that takes quite a bit of headspace for me at the moment. So I've, I've done a few bits of that, but I haven't really got through um, a great deal of that. So there's absolutely no point in showing you. It'll be a huge surprise then. Um, but I have been ticking away on the old Chauncey sweater. So I, oops, measured it and tried it on the other day. Um, and I'm really getting there now. So this is on a 2.75 millimeter needle. It's done in the Istex Twinny Tweed um, and the Rauma La Mouliane. so it's a quite a light fingering weight so it's a, a hefty commitment but I think I've worked out now that um, ten and a half inches is my is the sweet spot for me for a cropped sweater so I think I've got a couple of inches to go uh, before I kind of hit the ribbing to be able to, to create that sort of length and then if I have to go a little bit further down on the ribbing I think the ribbing is supposed to be an inch and a half but I don't mind having a little bit of a longer ribbing section if it's not quite right. So yes, that one, um, hopefully I'll be on the arms by next week on the old Sleeve Island. Don't we love a Sleeve Island? So heading to Sleeve Island pretty soon, I would hope. I thought I wasn't gonna have enough. I thought I was going to be playing a little bit of yarn chicken, but I think I might be all right. I think you're supposed to have 450 grams of the main color and I had 400. However, because the garment is actually 13 inches, that's what it's supposed to be and I'm only going to 10 and a half. I think, I think 
I might be all right. So yeah, if not, I'll add a little white stripe or something at the end. Um, I've got plenty of the white, but not a great deal of the red. So that one, ticking away slowly but surely. And then the other thing I cast on, I was, I was looking at yarns and stuff last week, is the Botanical Garden Sweater, which is uh, by a Norwegian designer called Inga Semmingsen. Semmingsen, I think. I'll put it here. Um, and yes, it's a beautiful yoke with uh, leaves and hummingbirds, etc. So I have found some undyed yarn and a sock blank in a tealy colour. Uh, which is a gradient as you can see is that going to go let me see so I've skeined those up too much light oh there we go so yeah so a nice little um undyed and a tealy color this has got a little bit of sparkle in there as well so those two colors work really nicely together so this will obviously be the um yoke color and this is the main color um but on the pattern I shall put a picture the, the neckline is quite high. Um, I quite like a, a wider neckline, um, as you can see with this. But uh, yes, um, yeah, quite like a wider neckline. So the, and the neckline is quite small. So I, I fiddled around with the um, gauge. I couldn't get gauge initially. So I think it says a, a three millimeter and a 2.5 millimeter. But I had to go down a needle size to get the gauge. I think the gauge is 25, 26 stitches per four in, uh, per four inches. Um, so I went down to a 2.75 and a 2.25. So this is what I have done. Uh, let me explain a bit more. So what I thought I would do is cast on a little bit later so I've done a provisional cast on just before we go into the main body of the yoke and then I'm going to add the neckline later on um, the neckline starts in a, um, a knit one purl one and then it adds some stitches etc etc I don't want to give away the pattern um, so yes yeah, so what I've done is I've done a provisional cast on here and then I am carrying on with a the neckline a little bit later in the pattern so what I'll do is I'll pick up these stitches once everything is done and then I can knit up and add however much I feel I need because obviously the neckline is going to stretch a little bit with the weight of the sweater but um, what I had at, at the cast on um, top of the actual pattern it was it was fine uh, it fitted beautifully but it was a bit too high for me so yeah, so I'm going to adapt the, the neckline that way. Um, just about finished, just about to start the, the yoke bit of the sweater now. So I uh, finished the rib section and I'm now going into the uh, knitting section, the plain knit section. But look at these lovely stitches. This is a, an undyed yarn. It is a merino nylon and the stitches are so neat on this 2.25. And that is not operator wise it's just the yarn it's really puffy and soft and fluffy uh, um, yeah it's creating a really lovely texture uh, and it's quite a big sweater so there's quite a lot of weight on this neckline so it's quite nice that there's quite a solid a, quite a chunky bit of neckline a long bit of neckline um yes and that really really is about it all that I've been up to um so yeah apologies for not a great deal of progress but i will add some pictures to instagram of the about the botanical garden sweater as i kind of hit the yoke because it is such a beautiful yoke i can't wait to do that bit um and as you know i like to have one color work working on color work and one sweater that's just stock and stitch for the sitting down of an evening um so yeah, so that'll be a nice little balance now. I've got something else on the needles. I think I've had quite a bit of cast on itis lately and I'm now seeing the uh, the downfall of that, which is the trying to allocate which project you're gonna pick up on. But trying not to be too hard on myself for not getting a great deal done. Uh, we also had quite a few um, evenings last week of um, uh, chats with work colleagues and pub quiz with friends and a couple of drinks with um, family over the old uh, 
video conferencing, Zoom, whatever is being used. So that was really nice. So a few evenings were spent uh, catching up with friends and family. Um, so yeah, for knitting content, that is all I have. A little bit less content than normal. So uh, yeah, as I say, if you are a new viewer and you want to see what else I'm up to, then please jump back on uh, a previous episode. Um, but hopefully I will have a little bit more to show you next week. So if you are only here for the knitting, thank you so, so much for dropping by. I absolutely do appreciate you calling in and I really do appreciate the comments um, that you're putting below. It's really lovely to hear what you're up to. And uh, yeah, it's nice to kind of have a routine. Um, um, the Welsh tenor uh, gets in touch with me. Hi, if you're watching, um, of a Sunday morning. And it's always nice to have a little chat with him on a Sunday morning. Um, and yeah, and people from Australia and the Netherlands, Marsha and Karen, thank you so, so much for sending me regular messages. It's lovely to hear that you are safe and well and that you are tuning in regularly, which is really, really lovely of you. Um, but other than that, knitting wise, that's about it. So please, please, please send me some comments. Feel free to like and subscribe, all those things. But I'll just have a few minutes of chatting what else I've been up to if you are hanging around. So if you're not, I will catch up with you very soon. If you are staying around, what have we been up to? So yes, here in the UK, we are into, I think we're in week four of lockdown and we have been told that we will be having another three weeks at least, um, which isn't really a surprise. Our uh, infection rates and unfortunately death rates are not really diminishing very much. Um, we are social distancing, we are only going out for the essentials or obviously going for work um, and exercise once a day. But still, these are strange, strange times, huh? And I think part of my brain freeze this week has been the, the working out how we're going to get out of this. This is uh, an odd little time. I'm not sure how we're going to kind of go back to normal. Not that there ever will be any normal, I don't think. Um, I hit, uh, university comes back next week and uh, this is the first module that we're doing entirely online. So I've been busy trying to get that up and running. So next week will probably be a little bit rabbit in the headlights time for, for the tutors as well as the students uh, working our way through, but I'm sure together we will get there um, to make sure that their last module of their academic year is um, beneficial and not just a tag on it has to be it has to give them the skills and the knowledge that they should have had whether they're in university or not um, a lot of universities run modules long and thin so you're kind of doing a few modules all the way through the year uh, but we we are a practical course and so we kind of take it module by module which means that in an event like this it's a little bit more difficult to we'll just write up the essay and sending in at the end because we have a whole module that we haven't even hit yet. Um, yeah, so that starts on Monday. So I shall be busy with that. Uh, video tutorials and seminars, etc, etc. Um, but yeah, it'll be nice to kind of see them all again. Other than that, we are fit and well, thank goodness. Um, keeping busy, not really seeing much of the children as we definitely have two very different um, time zones, I think. Yeah, we get up seven, eight o'clock-ish, they get up about three, four o'clock-ish in the afternoon. I, I honestly, what? But then they don't go to bed till like three o'clock in the morning. Um, but yeah, that's fine, that's how we're getting through. They're okay, they're getting their work done, so that is all that matters. Um, as always, can I give you my huge thanks and gratitude if you are a key worker, NHS worker, delivery driver, all those things, very, very much appreciated. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope your knitting or your projects, your hobbies are giving you some focus and some joy. Um, I hope the guilt I was talking about isn't setting in too much, but um, it's there, isn't it, to all of us, playing in the back of our minds maybe. Um, but yeah, keep yourselves happy, keep yourselves well, and I will catch up with you next week. Take care all. Mm -hmm. Call you out. Bye.